was the end of that confrontation. That's what precipitated the call to our office. Fight. The independent witness tells us that one individual struck the other with a bottle, that it was a protracted fight, and that individual who was the aggressor, again, is the person that you see in the video on the ground. Now, that's contradicted entirely by the video, and I know my community is going to be troubled when they see that video. I'm troubled by these events as well. But the video shows one person on the ground and the other person as primarily the aggressor. Our patrol officers took this very seriously. They began an on-scene investigation, and then they asked our detectives to come to the scene and continue that investigation. This on-scene investigation lasted for approximately 45 minutes. After that investigation, where the video was reviewed by our detectives, where this independent witness was interviewed, where both parties were engaged in conversation by our detectives, we were unable to determine who would be primarily responsible for these actions. Again, the independent witness provides one perspective on who was primarily responsible. The video tends to point in another direction. So, both of those individuals were attended to by fire and EMS personnel. Both of them refused medical attention at the scene. Both of them refused to be taken to a hospital. Both of them were characterized as being uncooperative with our investigation. Both of them did refuse to press charges against the other. And so our officers were left in a position where it was unclear, based on contradictory forms of evidence, again, a video and a statement, as to what occurred. So I've directed our detectives now to follow up with both of these parties, because we have their information, we know who they are, and we have addresses for them. In addition, based on the video that I find, and I know you find troubling, I've asked our mental health capacity to reach out to the individuals involved in this and to do a follow-up and to see if there's something that we can be doing in the way of assistance. Again, I'm troubled by this video. I'm particularly troubled by the fact that it appears to have been taken by a Prince George's County police officer and released to our community. I'm troubled by what I see in the citizens video, but I also have to weigh that against what I know about the statements of an independent witness. So again, this is now under investigation. My information is that certain reports have been put in the hands of the public in addition to this video, and I'm going to characterize that as extraordinarily irresponsible. This is an ongoing investigation. We need to have conversations with the principals involved in this, and I would deeply appreciate it if our partners in the media and the public, to the extent that they have this information, would not be making efforts to reach out to those individuals, allow our investigators to do their work, and to try to draw the proper conclusions about who should be responsible, if anybody, for this situation. With that, I will endeavor to answer any questions that you have. I won't characterize uh, anyone, and I won't name anyone, because this is the subject of an ongoing investigation. What I will say is that the evaluation by our officers, again, the on-scene investigation, concluded that Mr. Citizen did not pose an immediate threat to himself or to other people, despite the fact that he had been involved in a fight. And we, as law enforcement officers, have an obligation to swear that that individual poses an immediate threat prior to committing someone for an emergency evaluation. So we weren't in a position to do that based on their evaluation on the scene in real time. And again, that's where I'm coming to my community to provide you the facts. Let's not Monday morning quarterback the decision of the investigators and the patrol officers who went to some due diligence in the course of this to try to get to a good decision. But I have asked our team to reach out to these individuals after the fact to see if there's something we can do to support them now that the crisis has passed. Again, the decision of the on-scene supervisors was that they could not substantiate that this individual posed an immediate threat to themselves or to other people 
And that's why they did not take that person into custody and then take them to a medical facility for emergency evaluation. It's a different circumstance than merely compelling someone to go see a doctor. It's, it's a great responsibility that we have, and that was the decision that they arrived at on the scene in real time. My understanding is that, and the characterization of that individual at the conclusion of this was that he was lucid and calm and communicating and able to answer questions clearly. Not what you see initially, which is my understanding immediately after we arrived and immediately after the events that you see in that first video have transpired. First of all, I agree with the sentiment of the person who says that they're sharing it in aid of providing the individual in question with the help that they may need. And that's why we're taking the action that we're taking. But that said, it's irresponsible for that taken by a Prince George's County police officer to be in the public's hands. And in my view, I own that. This department owns that. And that is the issue that I'm addressing principally with our community today. That's evidence, and it's irresponsible for that to be placed in the hands of the public, particularly when you start identifying individuals who are still subject to a serious ass assault and investigation. Can you say what protocols this officer may have broken? Again, we're only a few hours into that. I want to be clear with my community. I learned about the video portion of this just a couple hours ago. And we immediately initiated that internal investigation. That officer is being suspended. That investigation will proceed. And then our effort there is to determine who would put that in the hands of the public, again, irresponsibly. Because my view, coming back to what that individual said, and again, I agree with the sentiment that that individual expresses in terms of getting this person the help that they need. But I own that video. And that's part of an open investigation. And it's irresponsible for any of this to be in the public's hands until we're able to properly ascertain and investigate. Do you have the entire video? To the best of my knowledge, we do, yes. Was it body camera? No. It was a cell phone? I believe it was a cell phone. I can say for certain it wasn't body-worn camera. Was it a private cell phone or was it a private? Couple hours into it, I will tell you as soon as I know for certain. I don't want to mislead you, but that's part of the investigation. Irresponsible. Irresponsible. Uh, what I will say at this point is the fact that that becomes a public conversation is irresponsible. In terms of how that happened, that's the investigation. And again, I learned about this a couple hours ago. When I have those answers, the community will have those answers. One of the things I worry about the most is the situations that the young women and men who have to do this work are confronted with. And I'm worried that people who are afflicted by conditions such as this are not receiving the care and concern that they need broadly. And so that can lead to a set of circumstances where confrontation occurs. But my message is simply this. If you have a loved one or someone you care about who's thus afflicted, please communicate that. Because when someone is in crisis and police officers are called into the public space to deal with someone who's manifesting a threat, they're in a fight, they've been injured or they're, or they're injuring someone else, it's a very difficult thing. And our primary role is to restore peace. But we have limited tools to deal with these issues once the crisis evolves. And what I'm asking for the community's help with, with the community that supports those who are challenged with mental health issues, is what can we be doing to prevent the crisis from evolving so that 
officers with the tools that we have are not the ones trying to resolve this. Preventing that from happening in the first place is the solution to this in the long term. But too often what I'm seeing is that people with a long and tortured history of challenges are now in crisis in the street. And a young officer, a man or a woman somewhere in this country is having to step up and deal with that situation when everything else has failed them. And then our options are limited. And that's why it's not enough to point back after the crisis and say what could have been done. What I'm asking those who may have a loved one in that position to do right now is to, to look at that realistically, understand that bad things can happen to them in a, a multitude of circumstances, and then be persistent in trying to get them the care and the help that they need, and know that in the Prince George's County Police Department, you'll have a partner in advocating for that, because our goal, as always, is to prevent not to deal with someone who's in crisis. Just to be clear, if, uh, are your detectives now going back to investigate the actual assault that these charges will be filed? So what I'm going to say is this. They weren't able to draw any firm conclusions during that on-scene investigation. Both parties refused medical treatment. Both parties refused to cooperate with the investigation. And both parties declined to press charges against the other one. So at that point, you know, we can't compel people to get medical treatment, we can't compel people to, to charge someone. But now that time has passed, one day, and now that the circumstances have calmed down, I've asked our investigators to re-engage with them and to find out what the perspective of the two individuals involved are, but also to take the opportunity to look at the evidence on the video, which is troubling. Again, you heard that from me, that evidence on that video is very troubling. But we also have an account from an independent witness, a citizen, who says almost the exact opposite. And that's not captured on video. And so that's what's important in the investigation. And to be consistent with my community, and you've heard me say this before, video is very important, but it's one kind of evidence. Eyewitness testimony, forensic evidence. There's a, a number of things that we have to look at. We can't draw conclusions about what occurred just based on a video. And that video, as troubling as it is, is what happened after a number of other things happened. And if I haven't been clear about it, it is mentioned in our blog that these two individuals had been in a dispute about a half an hour prior to this dispute at another location. So this is carrying on as, as conduct in the public space. And then our officers are brought into it to deal with that uh, once it's evolved into a crisis, which again, which is why I'm thankful for your question, for the families, for those involved in the community, for those involved in outreach. The way that we are not here having this conversation is if we're looking at those things we're, we're being honest with ourselves and we're saying someone could end up in crisis. Let's work to prevent that crisis from happening in the first place. All right, Joe, thank you very much. Thanks, everybody. Appreciate you.